Welcome back everyone to part 3 of the flower tutorial. In this one we'll be creating the actual core where those stringy parts come out of from the flower. The parts that actually have the pollen and stuff that I'm deadly allergic to. So that's gonna be amazing. If you like this series please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I'd enjoy every one of those and let's dive right in. Amazing. So now if you want to add some of those stringy parts in the middle in the core we need to distribute those right there at the core geometry right and we have a core right we made it at the start we can actually fold this in for a sec now and this is our core geometry right this is what we end up with ctrl shift click beautiful so how do we distribute only at specific points at the top for example um let's just try it right um what am i doing there we go so we have our viewer enabled, which is fine. I'm just going to hold shift, right mouse, drag a little line there. So every thing that we do in front here um, applies to both our viewer and the outputs, right? The viewer is here. That's why we have two green lines. Shift A, let's find a distribute points on faces. There we go. And actually, I want this to be separate. So like that. And let's just join it back up right here just before that viewer note, all right? Just so we know what the hell we're doing. There we go. We're distributing points up that density, beautiful. So I don't want that to be at the bottom. I only want it to be at the top. So we can actually do a little bit of math to specify that location. And to do so, I'm gonna drag my selection out and I'm gonna hit normal. That's gonna be weird because we have a direct normal plugging into the selection, but we're actually gonna hit shift A and compare the normal as a vector, there we go, to a specific direction, right? And this is not going to be element-wise, but direction-wise. And the vector is going to be one in the Z direction. And let's just see what happens if I drag this up, All right? You can see that the points at the top are being deleted, which is not exactly what we need. So let's switch this angle. And now you can see that the elements at the bottom are being deleted, right? So we're only getting points distributed at an angle that matches this angle, right? That is greater than that angle. And then the density depends on how many strings we want. 150, perhaps. Fine. So that is going to be our points. We can now delete our viewer node by just pressing delete. And we can now turn that into string. So shift A and find instance on points um, there. And our instance is going to be, drag that out, it's going to be a curved line. Amazing. All right, so now we have some, some strings pointing out. And this is, of course, way too perfect. All right, so way too straight. I want this to be noisy. And I'm going to do that. Right, it's not that hard. So after we have our instances, and we can make that longer even, I'm going to hit Shift A and realize them. Right, because I want to affect each and every one of those individually with, for example, a noise texture. Right, so I'm going to hit Shift A and find a set position. And an offset is going to be a noise texture. Beautiful. Remember to connect the color and hit Shift A, vector math. Each time you do a noise texture connected to a vector, we basically need to subtract 0.5 as a vector. And then we have a noise texture. Now let's hit Shift A and resample our line to add some more geometry. And you can see with 10 already is well, a bit too low. Let's do 20. 20, beautiful. And now it's of course way too strong. I'm gonna set my detail to zero, my scale a little bit lower as well. And you can see it already beginning to twirl, right? So let's duplicate this and set that to scale. Amazing. And the scale can be a little bit less, something like that. And actually, my skill is going to be dependent on the position on the curve. I want those center points to be, um, well, staying in the same place instead of going all over the place and moving away from the core. I want that to stay exactly where they are. So that means that I want my skill to be multiplied with something that resembles the point on the curve, right? And that is the spline parameter. So drag that out to a spline parameter. And that already means that the starting position of the curve, right there, is going to have a value of zero and multiplying with the zero means zero, right? So that is not going to move at all. And the endpoint is going to be one, which means it's going to move stronger, right? So let's crank up that skill so everything is a bit more chaotic. And let's hit Shift A or let's just duplicate this skill. And we can now just scale everything just slightly down like that, right? Set this to 4D and you'll be able to control the noise seat pretty much like so. 
something like that, I guess. Fine, we can even crank up the strength just a little bit. So it's a bit more random. Amazing. Perhaps I also want to move this outwards a little bit, the farther it is from the core, right? So it all falls apart a little bit. Right, so how do we do that? Well, I can drag out my position to a position, right? And I want the offset to be the position. That, right? So now everything is being offset with itself, pretty much. Now, it's not completely what I want. I only want the, um, the X and the Y axis to be offset. So disconnect this for a sec and add a combine XYZ. And we have to separate that as well then. Separate XYZ. And I only want this to connect to the Y and the X. And the Z can be zero, can be the same. Right, so let's just connect this up here to the offset. And there we go. Now they're only moving out and not up or down. Right, so I want this also to be dependent once again on how far away they are from the core, which means we can use the same spline parameter value to scale this, right? So duplicate that skill, connect it up, and connect the factor to the skill. There we go. So now the starting points are nicely there. And if you want to happen, make this happen with more of like a curve outwards, I'm looking at my camera, there we go, you can see that. We can also hit Shift A and find a float curve and make it happen like that, right? Beautiful. And then we can even add another skill. Let me actually drag that down, there we go. Another skill to amplify that value a bit more. Right, so you're now moving this out with a little bit more strength, I guess. Now, all of our curves are the same length. I don't want that to happen. I want them to all have a random kind of length. So Shift A, trim that curve. And we're going to trim the endpoints with a random value between 0.6 and 1, I guess. So now every one of them is a little bit different, right? So now they are nice and stringy, right? So we can actually turn this back into a mesh. We don't need this point anymore. Select it, Control X, Shift A, and let's find a curve to mesh. Beautiful, profile curve. Um, actually, we need that to do, we need to do that before we join it with something that is already a mesh. So Shift A, um, curve to mesh, right there. And profile curve, curve circle. There we go. Now, the radius, of course, way too big. Crank that all the way down to more acceptable values. And the resolution can be very low, like 4. Now, the radius is still too big. So what I'm going to do is just drag that out to a math node. And I'm going to set this to 1, multiply it, or divide it by 100, for example. Right, So I can actually control this a bit better now. Amazing. Let's add a little bit more resolution in that curve line. There we go. Let's set that to 30 or maybe 40, right? Why not? So it all looks a little bit better. All right. So those are strings. Amazing, right? So this is already looking very beautiful and very flower-like. Right. So if you want to make those little lines longer, you can just increase the Z position of your, um, of your curve line. All right. That's too long. And you can just scale it out, out afterwards with this little scale vector right there. Scale value. Beautiful. Right, I'm going to keep it like this because it's fine like, as it is. So let's actually worry about how we are going to get this on our little strand. Right, and we can do that two ways. First of all, we don't really have a group input. Right, so if I add Shift A, a group input, you can see we have a cube, our original cube, right? It's not really what I want, so uh, we're just going to remove that. And I want this to be added to something we can draw ourselves a little strand, right? So how are we going to do that? Easy, Shift A, curve, and just add a bezier. Press Tab, A, delete, and delete all your vertices, and then just go to the draw tab and just draw your little strands, something like that, for example. And then I want this geometry node setup to be added to our actual strand, right? But I want this to be the same object so we can control all those values at some point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this geometry node setup that we're going to call flower. This is going to be our flower. Beautiful. And this is going to be our strand. So that's eventually the same thing, a flower and a strand. But right now we can just add our geometry nodes and add our 
lower. There we go. All right. But the difference is now we can actually have our group inputs that is a curve, right? So we can actually start using that. Amazing. So this entire section is something we can group up. There we go. Control G and just exit that. And then we can all move this a bit closer. So we have a nice clean setup right here. Beautiful. All right. So this is going to be flower head. Amazing. Okay, that was part three of the flower. In the next one, we will look more into how to actually set up the complete flower. Up to this point, we've only created the sub parts like the actual flower heads, but we need like the little strand and leaves and stuff like that. So that's coming up. If you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I'll enjoy any one of those. And thank you so much for watching. Cheers.